I won't be doing a rundown of the whole plot, as it is 30-some pages long. Rather, I highly suggest you watch the video, then come back to listen to my commentary on it. So to start, William's Purgatory is a sequel to Casey's Vault. Same universe, same main character. At first, I had no intentions of creating a sequel to Casey's Vault, since I'm a fan of one-off stories, and I wanted Vault to be in the same vein. I hate forcing sequels when the ideas just aren't there. A year or two went by after the original release of Casey's Vault on my old channel, and I started to think about the universe a little more. I still had no real intentions of continuing the plot, but ideas for sequels or prequels were popping up. I had thought of doing a sequel of just an action drama plot of a completely terrestrial heist. No Lovecraftian creatures, nothing paranormal. But that would be horribly downscaled compared to the original. How would I possibly justify a story that has only human-based problems when the first one has body and psychological horror? So then I thought of prequels, set it before the first one, that way we get a main character that has no idea about strange beasts from the void. But one major issue. I don't like prequels most of the time. I like to always further the plot, take the experiences from the last story and apply it to a new one. Not set the characters back mentally, physically, and emotionally. After these spaced out ideas, it kind of died. I moved on to other things and mostly forgot about it. I believe I was re-watching the Shawshank Redemption when I thought of an idea that a character is placed in a prison where the warden isn't a person but rather a force that keeps the prisoners in, lest they go mad if they attempt to escape. At this point, it wasn't set for the Vault universe, but within a short amount of time, I realized I could just make this the sequel. However, I knew I needed more than just this basic idea to make a proper sequel. I was going to shoot for some action-type plot for it, prison shenanigans essentially, but I knew that would get very stale very quickly. This is a pitfall I avoid as much as I can, having an idea but not trying to stretch out the writing beyond what the concept can realistically do for the story. Wait until I have enough ideas that I don't have to apply nearly as much filler. A good brainstorming session can go a long way in avoiding this problem. I think I was watching a Halo 3 ODST video about how the game has nods to the Nine Rings of Hell, like in Dante's Inferno. At that point, I knew right then that I wanted to graph that idea onto the Vault sequel, and make it focus on character development, rather than just more world development. Granted, since this is supposed to take place in a universe similar to ours, just with major paranormal additions, world building isn't as necessary. This was the linchpin I believe that made the story succeed more, where other sequels fail often. Rather than rehash the plot or up the stakes for the sake of a sequel, I chose to expand upon a character that had the potential for a lot of story. I want to state here that there are three key inspirations to William's Purgatory. The Divine Comedy, specifically Inferno, which I still have yet to read but I know the basics of it. Second, The Dark Knight Rises, for location. I tried to change the description of it decently, but for all intents and purposes, the prison is like the one in the movie. Lastly, another Nolan film, Inception. Not so much for the mind games of the cave, but for the history of William and his guilt regarding Emma's death. I intended it to be similar to Cobb's guilt with his wife. Now, the challenge was... Did I really want to write nine separate areas of the story to accommodate all the rings? No. No, I did not. This is where my longtime friend Creepypasta Reads, now the Midnight Library, came in and helped me save my own ass. During a Skype call talking about the story, one of us thought of the idea that maybe we could combine some of the rings together, as well as merging them with the seven deadly sins, to which we agreed. We then started to discuss what rings and sins should be combined, and which ones could have their own events. Wrath and anger were slightly combined and duplicated as William faced his wrath in the first trial, 
when many of his past victims came back to inflict harm. Anger was then used for William's confrontation with the person he felt led to Emma's death. Gluttony, sloth, and greed were combined in the trial where William was presented with a feast and a distorted, obese version of himself. Lust got its own trial. Pride is the last trial, referring to William's own self-image, being too prideful to let himself become emotional at the memories of what happened in Casey's vault. Way back in the first ideas of the story, originally I believe I was going to have William encounter the rookie from the vault and forgive him, realizing that the rookie was just a slave to higher forces. This would have taken the form of treachery. But then I thought of giving William more history, namely a love interest and her death, the inexperienced character that froze up and made Emma go back for him. Originally, the heist member would directly kill Emma, turning out to be a double agent, but as development went on and I put a heavy emphasis on philosophy, I decided I wanted William to have more inward forgiveness of his own issues than that of forgiving an outside character. The double agent character was then going to take the form of the treachery phase. Of course, treachery was completely cut after I changed the idea of the character. Side note, the fog that William encounters between the levels came from another story that I had come up with, in which the main character would be in a sort of woods area, gray skies, and a thick fog at his feet. The character was living through his entire life in his mind, as he was dying from something just before the story starts. When the character got through a memory, a fog would roll over him and transition him to a different memory to overcome. I never wrote the story, because all the memories I would have to come up with was not going to be fun for me. The fog transition was instead incorporated into purgatory. Nazra was put in because I wanted a mentor figure that was an older man. Think Gandalf, the Karate Kid teacher, and so on. Side note, I was informed by a commenter that Nazra is a female name in Arabic. Unfortunately, the online name generator I used to get that name didn't say what sex it's usually applied to. If this is true, whoops. The prison that William is stuck in, like I said earlier, is like the one in The Dark Knight Rises, just with more rock and less actual metal structures. However, the original idea for the prison was a huge earthen structure built upside down on a massive overhanging cliff, somewhat like the southern air temple in Avatar. But I soon realized that escaping that place for most would be as easy as jumping to their deaths. Not to mention, there's no cliff face in the world that would support the size I was thinking. A cool idea in a fantasy setting, less so in one set in a reality similar to ours. The Light Starved were an afterthought, something I came up with while in the middle of writing. However, they became a fairly useful tool. Not only did they let me show the result of the influence of the prison when one is subjected to darkness for extended time, but they allowed me to rip the band-aid off for William discovering the prison was more than just a regular place. They also gave me a way to make William's journey through purgatory more stressful as he loses some of his supplies during the scuff with the gang and the subsequent attack from the light starved. All in all, they don't exactly play a huge role in the story, but aided me in pacing the plot better, as well as introducing some Lovecraft where the story was lacking some. What are the trials of purgatory? Are they real, or are they just psychological? A bit of both. The etherical warden uses the aspects of your mind to test you, and should you fail, the warden will physically destroy you in the way appropriate to how you failed. The first trial William faces, to be honest, I didn't fully think it through, as he technically dies from the mob, and there is no real win scenario. I consider it to be more of a taste of what was to come, not necessarily to make him fail, but give him a chance to turn back if he wanted to. Do I have any future plans for this series? At the moment, no. I've not given any real thought to a sequel. I don't even know where I'd go with a sequel. I also like where I've ended William's story. He's a reborn person, now acting as a sort of Robin Hood figure. 
So now for the symbolism and ideas within the story. I wanted to put a heavy focus on self-reflection in the story, the main character healing the damage to their psyche and overcoming some of their personal demons. I also wanted to avoid the main character dies in the end as well, both in Casey's vault and in this. I believe writing a whole story, growing with the character only to have them bite the bullet in the end, is a huge waste of time, if not done correctly, which usually it isn't. Most of the time, it only serves to create a forced sense of selflessness and heroism. Another focus of the story was to make a sequel that defied the usual issues of many sequels, where they're a rehash of the first one, but with different wording. I believe the key to a good sequel is lots of character development. Never hit an endpoint in how they can expand. Lastly, I wanted to show the duality of man. Those who need to be free, such as William, willing to risk his life and mine to escape the prison, whereas Nazra is complacent where he is. Even though he states he is mentally free, he still doesn't care to test himself in the cave trials again. Now let's boil this down to its base components. Plot. Prison drama, but with a paranormal twist, and overcoming the system. Characters. Limited main cast, allowing the reader to only have to focus on a few people and their actions, beliefs, and motivations. A mentor-student relationship, which gives us different perspectives on the same subject. Enough side characters to fill in the rest of the story and allow the main characters to express their traits in the ensuing plot moments. Themes. Self-reflection and mental healing the human will to be freed from imprisonment, and the antithesis of freedom, complacency.